Hello and welcome to the WordPress series. This is the third session and in this session we are going to look at WordPress dashboard. So in this session we are going to look at WordPress dashboard, settings and user management in WordPress. So let's get started. In the previous session we had installed WordPress on our website and then logged into our admin account. After logging into the admin account, here we are in the admin dashboard area. Let us explore this dashboard one by one. First of all, on the top, you will see the screen options. When you click on this, you will see what all options have been enabled that are checked. So the first is the welcome option. If I uncheck this, the welcome option is gone. Similarly, we have the WordPress events and news that is here, quick draft that is here, activity that is here and at a glance so that is here. So all these specific options, all of them are enabled right now and uh, we can uncheck them if you want to hide any of these options from the dashboard area. So let it remain enabled. Next is the help section. Here you can see that there is help available for various options. The overview, navigation of the dashboard, the layout of the dashboard and the content that's available on the dashboard. So you can check these. Next, we come to the welcome section on the dashboard. Now this is something that can come in handy for quick access. For example, if you want to customize your site, you can directly uh, customize it by clicking on this option or you want to write your blog post or add a page or view your site. So these are quick navigation options that you have. Then is the quick draft section wherein if you have some topic in your mind and you just want to create a draft about it for the blog post maybe so then you can write the title and the content and save it as a draft which you can later on find under the posts section so when you hover on to post and go to all posts you will see the draft that you had written and saved at a glance means how many pages posts and comments are there on your website and which theme is enabled currently so currently I have the default theme that came with WordPress that is 2019 theme and I have one post, one page and one comment. These are what I got in the default WordPress software installation. Next is the activity section. Here you will see if there is uh, any activity that has happened in near past. So uh, what was recently published was the post hello world and the comment. So this is basically what happened at the time of installation because I really have not done anything after installing WordPress. And these are the uh, WordPress events and news which again you can check. They keep on getting updated on their own. So if you come across any event that you would like to attend, there are meetups, news, word camps. So whatever uh, event or news you want to check, you can just click on it and check it from here. Now, all of these sections are collapsible. So once you click on these arrows, they will get collapsed and you can um, expand it again if you want. And also, you can rearrange them so you can just click and drag whichever section you want wherever and uh, so suppose I want the activity section to be on the top here mm, that's it so whatever you like however you like you can arrange your dashboard next we come to the settings option here on the left you can see there is a menu bar and the left side menu bar has various options in it. First of all, here on the top, you will see the title of your website. And under that, when you hover on the title of your website, you will see the option to visit site. So when you click on visit site, you will be redirected to your site homepage. The number of comments that you have and new. 
so from here you have a again a shortcut you can directly click on new post media page or user whatever you want to add to your website you can simply just check that out from here now this is the home section of your dashboard and you click on updates it will show you if there are any updates available for the wordpress that is installed on your site or for the plugins or themes that are there so we will see them when we come to installing plugins and themes so let us start with the settings option first of all in the settings option we have seven subsections now these settings will apply to each and every component of your website keeping that in mind these are generic settings that you are setting up for the entire website first here under the general settings we have the tagline so let's update the tagline all right and the wordpress address that is the url that you want the site address that is the again the url of your website as we had seen at the time of installing wordpress the default wordpress was uncompressed uh, under the wordpress folder so that would have led to the site address to be the domain and the wordpress address to be domain slash wordpress so not to get confused we have actually installed wordpress under our root domain therefore the url for the wordpress address and the site address will be the same email address this is the address that will be used for admin purposes membership anyone can register this should be enabled new user default role that depends what kind of user role do you want to give to your users on your website so by default it is a subscriber for your website site language this is what we had chosen at the time of installing wordpress time zone so in india it is utc plus five and a half hours date format whatever date format you want uh select it from here time format again you can choose whatever time format you want for your site and week starts on monday same can be modified according to your choice if you want it to start on sunday or tuesday or whatever day so we will let it remain to default that is the week starts on monday and save changes next is the writing section what should be the default post category right now it is uncategorized because we have not created any category as such and this is the default category that has been set up default post format that is the standard format that you want for the post or you can check any other kind of format that you want from the available options uh so generally what we see is the text with a header image that is the standard format of a post next is the mail server you can just omit these settings for time and save changes next is the reading section in the reading section you can specify what do you want to be displayed on the home page do you want a static home page or you want your latest posts so um right now we do not have any pages or posts created so we will let it remain to default we shall come back to this at the time of setting up themes and creating pages so the blog archive page how many posts do you want to show at a given point of time on your blog archive page that can be set from here so a maximum of 10 posts syndication feeds show the most recent 10 items so this is about the feeds for each article in a feed show full text or a summary you can decide if you want to keep a full text or a summary for the feed and search engine visibility if you want to keep it as a private site and you do not want it to be indexed on the search engine you can select 
this option to discourage search engines from indexing this site and save changes. Next we come to discussion. Default article settings. Comment settings. Comment author must fill out name and email. This you can check or uncheck if you want to have guest comments and uh, if you do not want it to make mandatory for somebody to enter their name and email at the time of commenting on a post. So that is that depends on your requirement. Users must be registered and logged in to comment. This again is out of your wish and desire. If you want only registered users should be able to comment on your site. Automatically close comments on articles older than 14 days. This you can choose if you think that there are going to be articles uh, where you are expecting a lot of commenting. Then to handle such situations, you can decide if you want to keep the comments option available uh, for how many days and so on. You can check on the other settings as well. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment An email to the admin of the website will be sent. A comment is held for moderation. So if some comment has been posted and uh, that needs to be moderated, then also you will be sent an email about it. Comment must be manually approved before it appears. This you should check. Comment author must have a previously approved comment. This is again out of your choice if you want to keep this as a restriction. Hold a comment in the queue if it contains two or more links. So this is basically helpful to prevent spamming on your website. Comment blacklist. So here you can specify any IP address or email ID or any URL from which a comment will never appear on your site under any article. Avatars. These are small images that would appear next to the user profile and save changes. Next is the media. Here you have certain specific dimensions for images that you can set up for a generic use on your website. That is every image that you upload on your site. For that, a thumbnail size will be of 150 pixel by 150 pixel. A medium sized image would be of 300 by 300 pixel. A large size image would be of 1024 by 1024 pixels. And you can specify if you want it to be uploaded in two folders. So when you will check the backend of your website on the cPanel, you will see whatever media you upload will be saved in specific folders on the basis of month and year. If you check this option, save changes. These are the standard image sizes that are used. You can modify them if you want to, which will be applied to every image that you upload on your website. Next is permalinks. So in permalinks, you can specify if you want the URL of your post to have the date specified in the URL itself. The most appropriate permalink is to have the post name. That will be the post name when you specify at the time of creating the post. So the domain name forward slash post name. This is the most appropriate URL for the post. Or you can have a custom structure if you want. For example, if you want the uh, domain name forward slash post name forward slash author. So when you click on author, that will be added under the custom structure. But I do not want this. I only want the domain name followed by the post name. And you can specify the category base or the tag base also if you want. Let it remain to blank because we have not created any category or tag till now and the default will be used. Save changes. The last option under settings is privacy. 
here you can see that there is a privacy policy draft that is already created you can opt to use this page or create a new page so when you click on use this page and when you go to pages all pages you will see a draft for privacy policy page has been created click on it and here you can see that there is a draft for your website you can check all of these and modify them according to your website usage so this is just a draft which you can use as the basic layout for the privacy policy so these are the settings that we need to check next we will check users when you click on users you will see there are three options all users add new and your profile so your profile is the person who is already logged in that is the administrator right now and when you click on your profile you will see that what is your username what is the nickname you can change it if you want display name publicly as again you can specify what name do you want so if you change a nickname here you will get that under the options the email id about yourself you can write some details about yourself you can upload a picture for the profile picture and the password you can select to get a new password next when you click on all users here will be the list of all the registered users on your website since i am the only registered user on my website as of now so it is showing only one user from here i can click add new user username email both are required first name last name these are not mandatory but you can add them and send the new user an email about their account so an email will be sent on to the email that is getting registered and you can specify the role for the user who you are adding so it could be a subscriber it could be a contributor an author an editor there are different capabilities that every role has a subscriber is not allowed to add a post on your website a contributor can add a post similarly an author and an editor can add post and they have limited administrative uh, capabilities as well so here i am adding this user as a subscriber click on add new user and under the all users section you can see now there are two users on the website and the role is of a subscriber and that of an administrator respectively so that is about the settings and the user management on wordpress this is how you can add subscribers from the back end that is as an administrator from the admin dashboard or else you can create a form on the front end of your website which will be available for the visitors on your website to register as a subscriber with their username and email id and other details as you would require so that we will see in the later sessions so in this session we explored the dashboard that was the admin dashboard the settings and the user management in the next session we will look at adding pages and posts and media after setting up the theme So that's about this session. Thank you very much.